Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies and welcome to this latest Chassis Sim video tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to discuss today is monster file tips and tricks. So this is, a, this is going to be a great little video, so let's get started. Okay, for anyone with any nodding acquaintance with Chassis Sim whatsoever, a good, you should know that a good monster file is absolutely critical for your efforts in chassis sim because the thing about the monster file, ladies and gentlemen, is it link, it is your pathway between your data acquisition system and chassis sim. You get this right, everything else will flow um, downstream and will flow downstream easily. But if you get this wrong, it's going to start for your efforts. Now, over the years, we've seen quite a few foobars made with the monster file, but the great news for today is that the great news is that these fixes are easy, and we're going to do, and this is what we're going to be discussing in depth in this tutorial. And it's also something that we talk at much greater length um, in our boot camps, and in particular during the boot camps, we actually give you some examples to use this, so you can actually apply what we're talking in real life, so it sets you up in the appropriate way. So let's get started. Okay, linking data to the simulator, creating a monster file now. For those of you who are familiar with the monster file, forgive me for the repetition, but it's worth going over again. So, a monster file is created from a single flying lap of data. Now, this is typically exported at 50 hertz from your logger, and the monster file can help you construct the circuit properties, and it'll perform your baseline modeling for things like your tires and your error modeling. And again, these is, uh, this is what we've discussed in length in um, other tutorials on the Chassis YouTube channel, and it's also to, during the boot camp, we give you practical examples of how to do this. But the base monster file, like the, like the monster file in its absolute base format looks like this. So what we've got is we've got distance in meters, we've got RPM, lateral and longitudinal G, front left damper, front right damper, rear left damper, rear right damper, steered angle at the tire, throttle, and speed. Now, believe it or believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, using just these channels, you can get a significant way down the road. And I've spoken in other tutorials about how the chassis sim monster file really much busts the myth that in order to do proper vehicle modeling of your car, you need a $50,000 data acquisition with 500 sensors. That's a complete nonsense. And the monster file really is a great indicator of that. But in terms of what's actually in the monster file, let's talk about that in a little bit more depth. Okay, so you've got speed, RPM, lateral and longitudinal G. Also too, let me just talk about the units for all this as well. So speed's gonna be in kilometers per hour, RPM is, unit, is um, unitless, lateral and longitudinal is in G. Steer is at degrees at the tires. Um, throttle and lap distance, we're talking dampers, loads, that's if they're calibrated properly. And I'll talk about that, um, and I've, I've spoken about that in depth in a few other tutorials. We're talking pitot speed, and we're talking vertical G. Now, here is the key. All of this is in strict SI units. So we're talking speed and KPH. We're talking dampers in millimeters. We're talking loads in um, uh, kilogram force. Now, those of you who are a little bit anal reckon that, that would probably say this should be in Newtons, but kilograms force is basically how we've set everything up. Um, and all of your accelerometers are in Gs and steer is in degrees. If you stick to that, you cannot go wrong. Okay, zeroing conventions. Let me just talk a little bit about that, particularly zeroing conventioning uh, with um, dampers. Now, chassis sim is quite capable of dealing with dampers zeroed in the air and zeroed on the ground. My personal preference when I'm making the monster pile is to zero on the ground. Now, I do this for a couple of reasons. Number one, it makes all my hand calcs a lot easier. But the other thing, too, is it, it's less prone to error. Let me give you an example of this. If you are dealing with a race car that's appropriately calibrated, yes, you'll get away with it. But let's just say that you're in a situation, particularly for all the sim racers who are tuning into this, if you're going to use something like chassis sim, the problem with the zero offsets in some sim racing games is they can be a little bit wonky when you're zeroing them in the air. So if you zero them on the ground, it just removes an awful lot of error. So I just really wanted to sort of put that out there. I know there are some. Uh, I know there are other sh uh, chassis sim users who use um, zeroing in the air quite um, quite successfully. My personal preference is on the ground, and the, and the where you zero is with the car trundling out of the pits. Okay. Monster file traps for young players. Now, 
really, this is the things that we've really noticed over the years that most people will make mistakes on. Now, this is one of these good news, bad news stories. Okay, bad news, when you don't do this sort of stuff, it's, gonna, it's, it's going to make your day very, very difficult. The great news is what we're about to talk about here is this is all incredibly fixable. So first things first, the distance factor has to be at least to, to two decimal places. Now, personally, I go to free because I'm a little bit anal with regards to this. But the best thing to do when you're setting this up in your logger, like for example with Motec, you can actually go into the corrected distance math channel and it actually allows you to set the number of decimal places. So that's one thing that you um, can do with that. To my knowledge, tool, uh, um, a toolbox will do that for you automatically. That being said, if you're using something like Wintax or Windarrow, you're probably actually better off creating a math channel because it'll actually export that out for you automatically. Secondly, for the love of God, dampers have to be positive and bump. I have lost count of the number of times I've seen customers email me a monster file, oh, this didn't work. And when I look at the monster file, what I'm seeing is damper pots that are all that all have all negative numbers and have all been calibrated in droop. One of the things that I cannot stress enough, dampers must be positive and bump. If you do that, it's just going to make everything in chassis sim a lot easier. Also, too, steer input is calibrated at the tire, not the steering wheel. So typically what you're going to do is take your steering wheel channel and divide it by the rack ratio. Now, you can measure this easy, very, very easily. On a setup rig, all you've got to do is get in the car, put the steering wheel to 90 degrees, 180, and measure what um, the, um, two, uh, what the, the two front wheel positions are doing and take the average. That's what you're after. Throttle is scaled to 100% max throttle. Now, some, and the reason I mention this is one of the changes, recent changes we've made to the Aero Toolbox has made that very, very sensitive. And the fact that we've given you the ability to go and look at part throttle conditions. So make sure you scale that to 100%. Right, for vertical G. Now, the reason you use vertical G is in the expanded version of the monster file where you're taking into account those 11 base channels we talked about earlier, your tire loads, Piso speed, vertical G. So you're looking at about 17 columns all up. Now, the reason you want the vertical G filtered at 5 hertz is that we're using the vertical G sensor to reverse engineer um, the road camper, and that's when you combine it with um, distance, uh, when you turn, combine it with GPS um, data. And the reason you want it at 5 hertz is that you don't want the vertical acceleration data that you get with the vertical G. You want it at 5 hertz so you can see what the road undulations are doing. So that allows chassis sim to go in and calculate... Um, the road camper. The other thing too, the other huge trap I see with young players is that the lateral and longitudinal G's uh, um, uh, sensors are really, really noisy. Now, that typically happens for a, uh, for a variety of reasons. There's uh, there's probably something, uh, something a little bit wonky that's going on with the sensor. Believe it or believe it or not, the great news is if you filter that out at about 20 hertz, it takes out a lot of the rubbish because what you're looking for is the local car variations, but you don't want every, uh, but you don't want everything in between. The other trap that I see constantly made that will crash chassis sim is is when when you create a monster file, save this as a text tab delimited file, and and the reason that you want this as a text tab delimited file is that's the format the chassis sim needs. And typically, when you say and and the bulk of uh, when you create the monster file. About 98% of the cases, you're going to be using Microsoft Excel. And in, in, in Excel, you go to Save As, you choose the file format, go to Text Tab, uh, Text Tab Delimited File, and you're as good as gold. Now, for those of you in Europe, your uh, chassis sim, the monster file, will deal um, with um, commas as opposed to decimals for the monster file. One of the things, though, make sure you save it as a text tab delimited file because it's either looking for a space tab or a tab file between the numbers. So I cannot stress that point enough. Now, the great news is, ladies and gentlemen, you follow all of those steps, you're laughing. You are going to be creating monster files in your sleep. Violate that, you're going to have a pretty bad day at the office. Okay, so what do we do with incomplete data? And particularly, particularly when you're dealing with in a situation where you don't have things like damper pots. All you've got to do is put in a whole column of zeros because what Chassis Sim is looking for 
is that when it reads a monster file, it's actually looking for a numerical value. So if you don't have that in the monster file, just put a whole bunch of zeros. Now, one thing that I'd also add to that as well, again, what you're seeing here is the base version of um, the Shastian monster file, which is about 11 columns. So, and if you don't have things like loads, pto, and vertical g, you're quite ha uh, you are quite happy to leave it like uh, uh, you are quite happy to leave it like this. That being said, if you've got a situation where you don't have strains but you want to use things like pto speed and vertical g, what I would do in that situation for um, the strains, if you don't uh, if you don't have um, uh, strain gauges or load cells, put a whole bunch of um, zero uh, uh, column of um, four columns of zeros after the initial speed. For pto speed, what I would do is if you don't have a pto speed sensor, simply copy um, the speed um, uh, sensor here, paste it there, and then put in your run vertical G. Do that, you're absolutely laughing. So, to sum up, the monster file is a very key ingredient of chassis sim. That being said, if you get this wrong, it's going to make your life really difficult. But the great news is a lot of these mistakes are really easily, are very, very easily rectified. And if you do this process right, everything else is gonna flow very, very easily downstream. And at that point, let me conclude the tutorial. And the other thing too, let me also say as well, is that during our boot camps, you're gonna be able to put this into practice. So I really strongly, strongly recommend if you're sitting on the fence about the boot camp, it's definitely something worth your while attending because you'll be able to apply all this. And at that point, let me conclude the tutorial and we'll catch you in the next Chef Sim video tutorial.